Welcome to our video on how to create opportunity reports in Salesforce. My name is Steve and in the next few minutes you will learn how to create reports in Salesforce that take advantage of this super easy to use and powerful tool. It's my opinion that every user will benefit by knowing how to get what they want out of Salesforce using reports. In the description I've included links to our reports and dashboards uh, playlist where you can explore every video that we've made about reports. I've also included a really helpful video about optimizing Salesforce and increasing results. Check those out when you can. Now let's get into it. We're gonna go ahead and walk through how to create an opportunity report. And the place you wanna start for that is the reports tab. Now I happen to be in an app that has the reports tab added to it. If you don't see reports here at the top of your screen as a tab, easiest solution is to go to the three by three over here on the left and type in reports and you should receive the reports option here and when you click on that you should uh, end up at the reports tab so here i'll go ahead and select new report and then i'll select opportunity or start to type out opportunity now you'll notice here that i'm in recently used and i don't see any so if you type in opportunity or part of opportunity and you don't see it, then go ahead and either select all or you can literally go straight to opportunities here. So you'll notice here that I'm seeing the same options depending on what I've selected. Now, the importance of this choice, what we call report type, is you're deciding what data you want to have in your report, meaning what fields you want to filter on or what fields you want to display. And so if I just want opportunity data, then I'll just select opportunities. But if I wanted to see opportunities with products, for example, or partners or history, et cetera, I have several different choices to choose from. But in this example, I'm just gonna select opportunities. So I'll go ahead and select opportunities here and I'll select start report. Now this creates a copy of the generic report template. And from within that report, I can now make changes to this layout. Now there's three things I want to sort of point out to you. The first one is what I call the layout or the report layout here in the middle. The second is this left-hand panel over here, um, which essentially controls what you see in the layout. And then you have your various buttons up here, which we'll get to in just a minute. But these are sort of the main features within the report. Now one little tip when you're building a report is if you're dealing with a small data set, like in this case, the opportunity data I have is a couple hundred opportunities it's useful to go ahead and select update preview automatically and turn that feature on. If you don't turn it on, every time you make a change to a field, you have to actually run the report to see the change sort of take place. And so if you're dealing with a large data set, that's useful. But if I'm dealing with a small data set under a few thousand records, I like to turn the update preview automatically to on. Okay, so now I, I wanna just start by making some layout changes. So over here on the left-hand side, I have my outline tab, and you'll notice here there's groups and columns. And so columns is what essentially controls what I'm seeing over here. So for example, if I wanna remove owner role, for example, I can click that. Or if I wanna remove fiscal period or age, I can go ahead and do that. And I can just quickly make those changes. I'll, I'll remove create date, um, and I'll leave, um, I'll leave these in. I'm going to remove uh, probability for now because we've got the, the sales stage. Um, I'll leave fiscal period in so you guys can see it. I don't see a lot of data in my next step, so I'll take that out just to kind of clean it up. Okay, so this outline area on the right-hand side, left-hand side rather, enables me to sort of control what I see. Now, if I wanted to, I can click on these fields using these down arrows, and I also have the option to remove the column. So these little carrots also give you more options related to that field. I just showed you the column option because I just prefer that. Okay, so now that I've sort of made some initial changes to my layout, um, I wanna look back over at my filters, which controls how many records I'm seeing. So at the moment, um, I've got a page full of records here, um, but I might wanna make some changes to what I'm seeing. So the filters, it's normally where I start, but in this case, with an opportunity report, there was a lot of fields on that layout. So I wanted to kind of clean out my layout first, but normally that first place I go is filters. So my filters um, by default are set based on this report type. So you can see here that I'm in all our opportunities. I'm in current, um, you know, I'm in this current fiscal quarter, um, et cetera. So I might want to change some of these things. So let me start by just uh, record ownership. Um, it's showing all opportunities, so I'll stick with that. 
Um, close date is current fiscal quarter. Um, let me just go ahead and say all time, um, just so I, I, I'm not missing anything if I'm expecting to see something. Opportunity status, uh, that's whether it's open or closed. I'll leave that as any, and then I'll leave all probability here. So it's a pretty open report now, essentially no filters. Okay, so at this point, I've got sort of, I've got this wide open view of everything. Now I can start to make some changes. So let's say um, I only want um, deals that, um, if it's open, I want to see it. So in this case, I'll, I'll set the status to open only. So I only want to see open deals. I don't want to see anything closed. And at the moment, I think that's a good starting point. Okay, so now I've got all of my open opportunities displayed. I've got my layout laid out the way that I want to. Um, if I wanted to access more fields um, or I see a list of the fields that are available in the report, I can open up this little side panel. And this side panel is all the fields that you selected when you chose the opportunity report type. So a quick little note here is these little carrots essentially reflect the different you know, areas of data that you've pulled in. And I don't necessarily wanna minimize all these because there's a lot here, but this essentially is a list of all the data that you could potentially put into the report, either into the layout, meaning the columns, or into the filters. So at the beginning of this, I said when you select the report type, you're really choosing which report type you want to see what you're really selecting is all of this data that you see here and you're deciding I want that available to me. All right, so I think we've seen what we need to see, but one little quick little tip here is sometimes if you're looking for a field, it's a little bit hard to do that here um, if you're scrolling through. So sometimes it's a little bit easier to open this up and scroll that way. You just got a little bit bigger view, um, but it's the same data. So these fields over here on the left are the same as the ones in the column. Now, what we haven't talked about next is uh, what we call grouping. So you'll notice at the moment that um, I do have this button called Add Chart, but it's actually grayed out. And it's grayed out because I actually haven't added any grouping or intelligence to this report that a chart could take advantage of. So in this example, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, group on stage just because I think that's a valuable piece of information. And so I'll go ahead and type stage here. And when I do that, you'll see stage move over to the left. So now my report is subtotaling by stage. And you'll notice the chart button comes up, which I'll talk about charts in a minute. Now, I said earlier that these little carrots give you options for these fields. And so these different options allow you to do various things. And so one interesting thing that you could do with numeric fields is now that you have this field um, this report grouped rather, you can then summarize numeric fields with different calculations. So in this case, I'm totaling the, the amount field, but I could average it. I could do a max, min, min median, etc. So I've got some, some other options here. Um, I can also add some other more advanced things like bucketing, which we add, talk about in other videos. And so again, um, there's just some more advanced capabilities that you can add. But these little carrots sort of open up um, kind of a world of capabilities related to those individual fields. But the quick one that I wanted to show related to a currency field was just the ability to kind of subtotal or, you know, sum it up or average it or whatever. Okay, so at this moment, I now have a pretty basic opportunity report, and now I have the ability to add charts to it. But for the sake of um, kind of the, um, the video, I'm going to just quickly save this report. Now, when I save a report, it's going to ask me for a report name. I'm just going to let that name stay there. It will create a unique sort of database name that it uses to identify the report sort of behind the scenes. You can add a report description. If other users are going to be using this report, you may want to give a quick description of what it is. And then you decide where to put it. Now, the, the significance of the folder is that controls what users have access to it. So private means just you have access to it. But if you put it in a public folder, then other users within your organization can see it. So I'm going to leave it private, but I wanted to just show you that um, this allows you to select different options. So if I had a sales folder, for example, which I don't think I do in this uh, org, I could go ahead and type that in and I would see that capability and see that folder available to me. In this case, as I said, I'm going to leave it in the private folder 
Um, but if I wanted to create a new folder, et cetera, I could. All right, so we'll leave it private. I'll go ahead and select save here. And now this report is saved. And if I were to run this report, um, I could start to use this report. So I'll go ahead and hit run just so you can see what the report looks like in sort of its final um, setup. Now, in this example, um, I didn't actually subtotal the field. So you'll notice here that it doesn't actually give me a subtotal. So there's a few little changes I wanna make to this, but I wanted you to see this in sort of its basic format. But before I go and make those changes, let me just mention a couple things here. So these buttons that you see here allow you to make changes to um, this report at this moment or in real time, but it, it allows you to make changes without saving it. So if I were to add a chart here or filter this further or search for something in the report, it's not gonna change the original report. It's only gonna change what I'm playing with at the moment. So for, this, for the sake of this um, video, I'm gonna go back and make some changes to my report but I wanted you to understand the difference between editing the report and then obviously that edit being applied into the future or just making real-time changes that don't actually get saved. So in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to edit and I'm gonna go ahead and add a few things. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna summarize my field. So now you'll see that it summarizes. Um, and now um, I wanna go ahead and add a chart so in this case, I'll add a chart and I'm gonna make this a funnel. So what I did here was I selected um, add chart and then I selected the chart properties button which allow me to configure the chart. And so in this case, I selected funnel for, this sake, for the purposes of this report, I think that's a really good choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. Now I'll save it again. And now when I run it again, I'll now see those changes reflected in the permanent uh, report. So now you can see I'll have my, uh, my uh, subtotal down here by stage. I've got my funnel report, etc. I can still turn the uh, chart on and off if I don't want to see it, for example, but the chart is still there. And when I run it again, the chart will still be there. So the big idea there was when you make a change to the report, it saves it. If you make a change in the output of the report, there's no change that necessarily is made. Now, a couple of the things I want to point out to you here um, are a couple other options related to the report. One is you have the ability to subscribe to this report, which means it'll be emailed to you, let's say, on a weekly basis. So when you select that, there's an option to schedule and select um, times that you'll receive it. And there's some options of where you, how you run the report and where it gets sent. Um, you also have the ability to push this report directly to a dashboard. Now, we do have a video on how to create dashboards in our reports and dashboards playlist and that playlist will be linked in the description. And in that uh, playlist will be more detail on how to create a dashboard. And so if you push this to a dashboard, you'll then wanna know how to configure it for that dashboard. The final thing I wanna show you is um, the export function, which I use a lot. And that's the ability to export this to Excel, either in raw format or um, in formatted. So at the moment, if I were to select formatted, it doesn't give me the option of how to export it. It only goes to Excel, and it's going to kind of maintain the grouping and the subtotaling. Details, I can dump this to either Excel or to a CSV, and it just gives me the raw format, and that's usually the format that I like to use when I'm you know, working with data. Okay, one other just quick thing about the charts that I wanted to mention. Um, if I go back into Edit, um, one of the things that I have come to realize about the chart settings in a report is they're limited. They're not nearly as powerful as the chart settings in a dashboard. So if you're going to be using a report as a standalone report and you're not um, pushing it into a dashboard, then the chart settings I think are useful. But if you're gonna be pushing this into a dashboard or using this report in a dashboard, you can still have a chart in it, but I generally take the chart, um, I remove the chart when I'm using a report with a dashboard. And so in this example, I'm going to go back to my chart properties and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to remove the chart permanently and then I'll save that change. And now this chart, this report won't have a chart. Now, the reason that's important is if you're in a dashboard and you want um, to control the chart, the, the dashboard itself has its own chart settings and you can define the chart in the dashboard itself, which I talk about in that dashboard video I talked about, or... Um, it can inherit or receive the chart settings from the report. 
But as I said a minute ago, the, the ability to configure a chart in dashboard is much more powerful. Now I know this video isn't about dashboarding, but I'll just show you quick that if I go in to edit this chart, you'll see there's lots of options on how I configure the charts in a dashboard. Very limited when I come in to add the chart in the report. You can see there's just a lot fewer options. So just a little tip, if you're going to be using this uh, report inside of a dashboard, it, generally speaking, you'll want to just use the, the chart options in the dashboards. I'm going to give you more options. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and permanently remove this, like I said, and I'll go ahead and save that. And that is a quick introduction into how, create, how to create an opportunity report. Thank you for watching this video. On the screen and in the description, I've included links to our reports and dashboards playlist. And I've also included a five minute video that will share three strategies that we use to increase results and reduce Salesforce license costs through a Salesforce program called OSP. Please spend a few more moments of your precious time with us and we will help you take Salesforce to a whole new level in your company. Finally, please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Thank you.